The British Prime Minister has been in Italy on a mission to take lessons from their government on stemming flows of irregular migration. Antonia has all the reaction for us. It's been in the UK and the Italian press. What have they been saying? Good morning. Well, uh, let's start with what The Guardian had on this. There was an analysis piece by their political editor, Pippa Crera, who says Starmer puts pragmatism before perceptions in meeting with Maloney. The important thing to understand here is that Keir Starmer is a Labour Prime Minister freshly elected in the UK, and Georgia Maloney's reputation is broadly far right, and her stance on immigration very hardline. Um, what's hard to tell, uh, if based on this picture where they seem to be having a whale of a time, um, is was this a hard pill to swallow for Keir Starmer or not? It certainly was for many in his party to see their leader, their Prime Minister, meeting with her and taking leaves out of her book, potentially on migration. Um, he said he was meeting her as um, the leader of Italy, as a major economic power, a GSET member and a NATO ally. But once again, look at the picture. Pippa Carrera says it wasn't quite as cosy uh, as the encounters he had that um, Giorgio Maloney had with his predecessor, Rishi Sunak. Uh, but La Repubblica says something else, is that it was just as affable um, as her encounters with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak at the time uh, that their 30-minute meeting uh, expanded to last an hour and that he gave her some souvenir, Larry the cat, the Downing Street cat, uh, uh, souvenir biscuits for her daughter's birthday. Um, now, Internazionale, the uh, Italian, once again, uh, paper, um, puts this in the context of the M Matteo Salvini trial. Now, bearing in mind that Italian uh, policy for stemming those irregular flows of migrants has been broadly to channel lots of funding into Libyan and Tunisian coast guards, uh, who are extremely controversial in terms of their reputations, and also to set up these um, detention centres in Albania for asylum seekers to go to while their claims are being processed. Uh, in the past, they've also had this closed-door policy, and it's this gentleman uh, who has been responsible for that, and he is now on trial for kidnapping, facing six years in prison, potentially. So, of course, that really adds to the slightly uncomfortable optics of a left-wing prime minister taking lessons from that government. He is deputy prime minister in Italy. Now, also in Europe, it's the climate crisis that is making uh, the front pages. Uh, you know, it's uh, Portugal, dozens of fires are burning across the country. What are the press uh, saying about that one? Well, let's look at the Portuguese Journal de Noticias. Uh, their front page on their website described yesterday as Ash Monday. Um, so extremely uh, dark, sombre uh, images that that evokes. Inside pages, we've got all these photos. The spectacular orange sky just shows you the scope and the extent of the flames. Um, and we also have quite poignant images of residents looking on uh, as the fire engulfs uh, whole areas. Um, you also have images of people trying with the means available to them to put out the blaze um, on their own, uh, in their own areas, in their own property. Yeah, meanwhile, in Central Europe, of course, uh, floods have proven extremely deadly and the extent of the damage to homes and to uh, livelihoods is becoming increasingly apparent. Absolutely. There was this piece um, in Idnez, a Czech online paper, um, and that headline says, never come back here. Uh, now, this is a town in the Czech Republic where the flooding has started to recede and residents have been able to return to their homes now, this couple went back to their flat. They saw that there was mud everywhere, that all of the furniture has been destroyed. And uh, she uh, runs a nail salon, which has also been destroyed by the flooding. And in this image, they're embracing. And it's her that said to him, let's never come back here. So that's just another reminder of the uh, enormous cost of climate chaos. We should take a look um, on, in, on that note in The Guardian, uh, where they've interviewed a number of climate scientists whose overall message seems to be this heavy rainfall that caused that flooding, that wasn't unexpected, that's not shocking, given the trajectory we're already on with climate chaos. What is shocking is the death and devastation it's caused, because what that proves is that the adaptation, the preparedness just wasn't there. And of course, that's essential for uh, Europe and Africa, especially as we're facing increasing effects of global warming. Now, finally, the Ocean Photographer of the Year has been decided. Um, why don't you show us the, the top picks then, Antonia? Absolutely. Well, this one, uh, who got second place, was taken uh, off the coast of the Shetland Islands. That oh. is a gannet, one of the largest seabirds in Britain. And it's an agile hunter, as you can see. It jumps, uh, it, sorry, it flies 
uh, up to 30 meters above the water level uh, to dive down, sometimes hitting the water as fast as 60 miles per hour. Uh, the photographer captured this moment while snorkeling. And as you can see, it is a formidable predator uh, for that fish. Um, also um, in our oceans, this uh, is wow. a photo of an ecosystem in all its glory. <laughs> yeah. um, these sardines have flocked around a concentration of plankton, forming what's called a bait ball. And of course, this uh, whale uh, has seen an opportunity. The bride whale is ready to take a bite of just all of that fish. Yes, looks like they're going to not be hungry for weeks after that one. <laughs> yeah, very impressive pictures, aren't they? Antonio, thanks very much with the press review on France 24. A lot more news in a few moments' time. So do stay with us.